Hi, I'm Imo, and welcome back to another video in the series of converting our, our patio to a three-season sunroof. In my last video, I talked about cutting a rough opening for your window, and in that video, my dad actually cut out this little, this big cut right here in the top right side of the window. And our first thought when you saw that was, well, what are we going to do? And that's what we're going to discuss in this video. We're going to discuss how to fill gaps. And most importantly, we're going to be talking about flashing tape and caulk. First, though, I have a cat to save. So, I have no idea how she got there. Why are you running away? Alright, so, it looks like she doesn't want to come down. So, we'll talk about the flashing tape versus caulk. So, with gaps like these, after you put on all the OSB, you're going to notice that you're going to leave some gaps in between the OSB. And these gaps are left in order to account for the wood expanding. You know, when it gets warmer, the wood expands, when it gets colder, it shrinks. And there have been online internet debates about what do you do to cover up these gaps. Because if there are gaps, that means that there's uh, places that air can leak out, which is not very good for insulation. So the, the two contenders in this great internet debate is flashing tape and caulk. So first I'm going to be talking about caulk. So the way that caulk works is, I'm, I'm just going to show. Well, I already covered this up with uh, duct tape, but we're going to put it in. And then what you would do is you squeeze it out. And this is actually pretty useful in some areas. For example, you want to use caulk to cover up small screw holes. And actually, I'll just take it off so you can demonstrate it. The reason we covered it with duct tape was because we actually already opened it before, so we didn't want it to leak out. So all you have to do is just squeeze a few times. Actually, you gotta get a good shot at this. And then cover it up. And then after that, you want to wipe it down uh, which we'll, we'll do off camera, but this is actually pretty good for covering up tiny holes like this. And we actually already did it on the side right here. And you can see that there's like a whole layer of uh, caulk. And, but if I press down on it, you'll see it's, it's it's very flexible, which is pretty good. But later down the line, like 10 years later, that caulk is going to be rock solid, which is not very good. Because if we, if we still want to account for the expansion of the wood 10 years down the line, this caulk is not going to cut it. This is very important if you're living in New England uh, or a similar area where temperature is very often, where it goes from hot to cold all the time. Because that means the wood's going to be expanding all the time. If you live in an area like Texas or Florida where it's, it's mild temperatures uh, all year round, what's going to happen is it's not going to expand much, so you're, you're not going to have to worry as much about your caulk not being able to handle expansion. In our case though, we need to be able to handle expansion because we live in a volatile weather environment. So that means we're going to be using flashing tape. There are many flashing tapes out there that you can use, but in this video we're going to be focusing on these two particularly. This one from Zip System, uh, where you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's, and this one from 3M, this 3M flashing tape, that I think you can only order from Amazon, which we'll link in the description down below. For this job, we're going to be using the 3M flashing tape. and. I was asking my dad, why do we use this tape instead of that tape? And actually, first I'll demonstrate how to use it and then I'll talk about it. So first you'll see that on the outside, it's not sticky. We need to, oh, plastic. This, uh, you take it out. You can see it's also not sticky on this side. And that's because it actually has a backing so that, because, because this is really sticky. What we're going to do is we're going to Measure out the amount that we need to cut out. I don't know, we're going to cut it out. And then, just like a sticker, we're going to separate it. There's a thin layer at the very top that you can peel back. Right here. And, whew, this is really sticky. So you're going to be really careful when you apply it. First, let me make sure it's the length we need. Okay, we're going to apply it right here, 
and then there we go. After that, we're going to cut it, and it's actually pretty uh, flexible. Let me demonstrate that on this side. You can see that you can stretch it really far if you want to. Whew. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wrap it around. And if I had my roller right now, I would roll it down just to make sure it's flat. Oh, there we go, my roller. So all we're going to do is roll it down. Uh, according to my dad, it's better to do it like this rather than this because when you do it like this way, you're applying more pressure. I mean, it doesn't make sense to me because you, if you're doing it like this. Actually, no, it makes more sense to me now. But I'm going to roll it down roll it on the outsides. And you can see that that gap is pretty well covered up. Now, let me demonstrate the other tape. We're going to use this other tape to cover, cover, cover up this gap right here. So let me move these. Huh. Let me move these to the side. Now you'll notice about this tape is that it's actually sticky on the underside, which means that it doesn't have a backing. So first what we're going to do is we're going to put it down and you'll notice that I actually do have some tape right here of that tape. It's actually really sticky. When you put it down, it's very hard to get it back up. So be very careful. That's why they have the backing on it. Just because it's that sticky. So now it's not straight. Okay, let's do this. Oh my god, it's not flat. Hold on. One more time. Gotta make sure it's very flat when I put it down. There we go. And then we're going to take our scissors and cut it. And as you can see, I didn't cut it long enough. So after that, I need to add some more tape. You can also see I didn't put it down straight enough, which is why I was so, so specific about making sure it was straight when I put it down. But after that, what you want to do is you want to take your roller, roll it down. If you have some left at the bottom, then obviously cover that up with some more flashing tape. But anyway, that brings me to the question. Why did we use the 3M tape for this job and not the zip system tape? Obviously, there are some minor differences in specifications. For example, the application uh, temperatures for the, for the zip system tape is 0 degrees Fahrenheit to 120 degrees Fahrenheit but the temperature for the 3M tape is 0 to 180. The zip system tape can handle UV, light, uh, UV, UV rays for up to six months. The 3M tape can handle it up for, to up for one year. So those minor things, but the main reason that we chose the 3M tape is because when we put the zip system tape down and you compare it to the amount that you put down for the 3M, you're putting down a lot wider tape. And since we're only covering like really tiny gaps like these, my dad thought it was a waste to use this, this giant width of tape to cover that small gap. So of course the width doesn't matter. So I asked him, okay, what's the cost per foot? And then he looked at me and he didn't answer. <laughs> so I'm gonna get, have to get back to you on what's the cost per linear foot. Because in our mind, what, what matters a lot to us is cost. So we, of course we want to save on how much tape we use. So it really matters like the length that we use. And if, if, we, if, it, if it takes less amount of money to cover the same amount of length, then we're going to get that tape. So that's why we're using this 3M tape. We're using it because my dad said he didn't want to waste tape. Hopefully in the process of doing that, we don't waste money. That does bring me to the question of if we're dealing with cost, then why not we just use regular tape? Here we have some eBay tape. We get this for free. And I was wondering, okay, can you use eBay tape to cover it? I mean, it's just tape. So let's try it. Let's... Okay. Okay. 
Okay, it looks like it sticks. Let's let me try. Let me show you something though. So I just try putting the tape on here, and then I'm putting it down. It doesn't stick very well, and the reason why is because the OSB is green. But if you put it on each stud, if you if you put it on each stud, it sticks to the studs really well. So it's up to your judgment. You could use eBay tape, but uh, you might have to deal with the sticking problem. Uh, in our case, we're going to be using the 3M video, the 3M tape, because this is a video and it's best to do it the proper way. Uh, if we weren't doing the video, we might have been using the eBay tape. All right, so let's get to flashing the uh, all the gaps. Okay, let's, let's do this one right here. By the way, don't put the uh, um, tape on the floor because it picks up all the dirt. Okay. Also make sure you measure out the amount of tape that you use before you do it or you'll end up being too short like I did. Right here you can see I almost, almost um, got a bit too short but this is right because if it's too short then you can always add on more tape. This is the most troubling part of using the tape because this is, it's really hard to get these separated. There we go. See, I'm very risky. I like to do it the entire tape. Make sure you have an equal amount of tape on both sides that you're trying to stick together. Roll it down. Actually, I'm gonna cut it on this side. As you can see, I have more tape on this side than I do on this side. Which means that if we want to be careful, then we're just going to add a bit more tape on this side. But for the sake of the video, I'm just going to roll it down. Then you want to continue this process with all the gaps that you have on your OSB, including the gaps between the OSB, the, the gaps between upright OSB, and for example, like right here. Now, talking back about the caulk, for example, I use the caulk to cover up this tiny little hole right here. And as you can see, I already uh, uh, wiped it up with the rag. You might not want to use uh, tape for this. I mean, if you have tape, you might as well use it, but caulk is just, it's, mu it's much easier to cover it and you won't waste as much tape doing it. I mean, you'll waste more tape trying to cover it than caulk. And that brings me to the last segment of this video. We're building a sunroom right now, so it's not like we really need a lot of insulation. So why do we need the tape? The answer is we don't, but my dad wants to use this building the sunroom as an opportunity to teach me. Like usually, uh, parents pay a lot of money to send their uh, their kids to technical institutions and colleges where they learn to do this stuff. But my dad, with only the money that he uses to buy the tools, and he gets to use the tools himself, whereas like at a school you don't get even get to keep the tools. He gets to teach me how to build a house. And. Of course, he doesn't have to pay tuition, and since we live in America, paying tuition is a bit scary. But hopefully, by by in the process of building the sunroom, he can teach me the things, the small things like putting flashing tape on, cutting the rough with openings for the windows, putting OSB board on, all the things that you learn at school. He can teach me himself, and even even if there is some concern about the money part. If you know, with Amazon affiliate, if we post the link in the comments down below, someone clicks it, they buy it, we do get a small commission, so it does make up for it in the end. But with that being said, I'm Ayman, and today I showed you how to. Well, I didn't really show you. I talked about the the the, the difference between using caulk and flashing tape for covering up gaps in your OSB sheathing or your sheathing in general, and then I showed you or I demonstrated actually putting flashing tape over those gaps. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and look at our videos on IM, especially our videos on converting our patio to a three season sun. Unfortunately, we didn't get a clip of taking Bella down from the garage because uh, Izami, Izami uh, my brother who goes to MIT, actually took her down. I didn't see him go on the ladder though, so he maybe he like grew like 10 feet in size and took her down. But anyway, I'm Ima, and I'll see you in our next video where we talk about um, putting Tyvek wrap on the house. And I'll see you then. Signing out. Peace.